New Arrival in the House. It's a new game from Nuts Publishing and Yasushi Nakaguro, Japanese designer. Um, this is uh, what Nuts is calling the Combat Rations series. So it's a small footprint box, a small game, uh, pretty light rules. This is volume two. Volume one was 300 Earth and Water. I did a video on that game on the channel that you can go check out. So this is volume two and games in this system kind of come in this sort of like magnetic flip box. Let's see if I can get it open one-handed um, like this. Um, and they're usually really well done. Here you can see, it looks like the Japanese emperor possibly. Um, this is a game about, uh, as the title would suggest, the Russo-Japanese War of the early 20th century, 1905, I believe. Um, really nicely done box. Um, and again, I believe this is the same designer as 300 Earth and Water. So you, you know what you're going to get here. A pretty concise package with some compelling gameplay decisions. Uh, right on top, we can see some Japanese army figures here. Um, and these are going to go on a track on the board uh, to represent Japan's um, advances uh, into the uh, uh, Chinese uh, mainland, essentially, in Korean Peninsula. I'm going to put these on the board. We've got six tiny dice, tiny D6s. Um, we have got a rule book, and uh, as you can see, it shares the cover with the box. The art in this game um, is really cool. Um, I really like it. It's got kind of a comic book style to it. Uh, Maud Chalmel. Uh, is the artist on this one. Um, so let's flip through the rule book real quick so we can see what's in here. It's not a complicated game, but it is. Um, there is some interesting nuances to it. Um, it's primarily a naval game. So uh, a lot of the conflict is going to be in ocean zones, as you, or maritime zones, as they're called. Uh, ports and ships are going to be very important um, to the gameplay. You can see the map, and we'll pull that out in a second. Um, the Port Arthur blockade marker, the titular Port Arthur, um, was a huge uh, part of this brief but um, interesting conflict. Not a lot of games on the Russo-Japanese War. The Tide at Sunrise um, is another one that I own. Um, it's about this conflict. Um, so we talked about the game setup and then the sequence of play. Um, so basically what's going to happen is uh, there's going to be sort of a little reinforcement phase and then there's going to be a sortie phase for each player, the Japanese player and the Russian player. Both sides are going to attempt to um, attempt naval operations. Then there'll be a scoring phase uh, similar to 300 where you're going to score a sort of a differential of points based on what you control on the map. Um, and then this goes into like all the things you can do in the operations phase. Uh, you can move ships. You can have a naval battle, you can, and then this talks about the battle, and I'll show you the counters in a second. There's a bunch of counters that come with this game, especially for a small box like this. There's a, a lot of pieces. Then there's a the scoring phase and uh, some of the other rules that affect scoring, uh, and then the return to port phase, and uh, then, you know, you're going to do it all again. I believe the game takes place over six turns, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there's also an optional rule here for uh, mines, um, additional ships um, that... Uh, either did or did not take place in um, sort of the conflict. Um, the attack on Port Arthur and then mine damage and stuff like that. So some rules about that. Some designer's notes on the back. Uh, and then uh, a bibliography of books if you're interested in reading more about um, the Russo-Japanese War. What I think is really interesting about this game is that it is a game about the Russo-Japanese War by a Japanese designer, something that we uh, don't get often, if at all, over uh, here in the West. Um, so I'm very, very keen to play this and see what um, you know, what he kind of has to say about it. Uh, so that's the rule book. You get, I believe, uh, one or two player aids. It looks like one player aid and just gives you the, the rules reminders on some of this stuff. Um, here is, uh, what looks to be, um, the, yeah, so it looks, you each got to roll a die. Um, and this is the operations phase and it's going to kind of go back and forth between players. So it's almost like the great campaigns of the American Civil War a little bit where high roll gets to do something. Uh, and then on the back here, some rules about uh, squad speed and naval operations and sorties and naval battles and so forth. All right, so here we've got some counters. Um, these are really thick, uh, as you can see, brown core, gray core, if you will. Uh, these look to be the Japanese uh, ships. Um, I'm not entirely certain what the iconography is. I believe the die is its movement speed, and this is its firepower, if I'm not mistaken. It looks like this is a turn track uh, that you're going to punch out here, and this is the Port Arthur blockade marker. And then on the back, ships will take damage, and you can see the diamonds there. I believe represent how many hits they need to take before they're sunk. Uh, and you can see the firepower goes down. So the Fuji goes from a five to a four, and then I believe three hits will sink it. I believe that's what we're looking at here. So we've got a counter sheet for the Japanese, and we've got a counter sheet for the Russians. Um, yep, as you can tell by the ship names. I really, again, really love the art. It's got a very comic book style. 
a nice color palette. And I like the damaged side on the back here, the smoke coming out of them. All right, let's take a look at the map. It does fit in this box, but it does fold out. So I'm gonna do that. And just a quick note again on the design of the box. Uh, Nuts did a really great job. In general, they do a really great job um, with the graphic design of their games. And as you can see, totally unnecessary to put uh, this stuff, but it looks like sort of like, it, it makes it look like the kit of a Japanese soldier. Um, here, picture of his family, a medal, some chopsticks for eating, and then some various other uh, sundry items in here as if this were his like go to war pack. Um, to this is the inside of the box. You're almost never going to see this. So it's really a nice touch that they did this. Um, and I'm a big fan of Nuts's graphic design. I thought We're uh, Coming Nineveh was also really well done graphically. Okay, to the map. So here is the map of the game um, done just really nicely. Um, I really like uh, the details on this map, the hills, um, and sort of the perspective as if you're looking at it um, like overhead from an angle. Here we can see down here some Chinese farms, it looks like. Uh, and then obviously we've got uh, the Japan here, the iconic Mount Fuji. This looks to be um, early 20th century Tokyo there, which is really cool. Um, just a really well done, uh, well done map. These are the ocean zones that you are going to be battling over. Um, the, Ru the, the, the Russians versus the Japanese. I almost said Soviets, but this is pre-Soviet. Um, and then we've got three port boxes that are going to be really important. We've got the port of Vladivostok here. And again, just some great art on there. It really gives you a feel. This might be based on some old photographs perhaps from the time. Uh, we've got Vladivostok. We've got um, Port Arthur itself, which is here. Uh, and then down here, we've got Diego Suarez as well. Um, so this is the conflict. If you've ever heard the story about the Russian Navy, so they thought they were going to beat the Japanese pretty easily, um, and they did not. Um, the Japanese ended up sinking the Vladivostok uh, fleet or severely damaging it, and the Russians had to, uh, in order to reinforce, had to sail their navy from uh, northwest Europe, um, basically from St. Petersburg, all the way around the Horn of Africa, <laughs> all the way to Japan, and they arrived some, like, some crazy amount of time later, uh, and by that point, the war was basically over. Um, so quite a long journey for uh, not a lot happening there. Um, so as I mentioned before, you'll get these little Japanese soldier tokens. Uh, these will represent the Japanese uh, army advance through Korea and um, uh, northeast China, um, as you can see. And you'll put these on the track. This will have an effect on the game. I haven't read the rules uh, fully completely yet, so I can't uh, completely tell you how this is going to work. But eventually it will get like this. Um, and they will go and advance along these lines. And here you can see Mukden um, and Ping. And uh, yeah, so uh, this is Port Arthur. I'm really excited to get this to the table. I might bring this actually on a trip I'm going to take soon. Uh, here's the scoring track, by the way. So, you know, if you're when you score differential points, this is going to move up and down. So when you gain points, your opponent loses points. So I'm excited to bring this on a trip uh, and play this. It uh, looks like it plays pretty quickly um, and some really high quality components. And it's about a topic that uh, not a lot of games get made on. So uh, it should be really fun. Um, and I'm excited to see what Yasushi Nakaguro has brought to uh, his corner of the world uh, in Wargaming. Uh, that is, once again, Port Arthur from Nuts Publishing.